everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's Rachel here with Oak and Lamb, and I cannot wait to share with you a video all about making a DIY candle. Candles are really easy to make. They seem really confusing and daunting, but they do not have to be. You can actually start making candles for a very low startup cost, which is great. So whether you wanna do this for a new little business or you just wanna do this for some party favors, wedding favors, or maybe some Christmas gifts, this is a great way to do so. Now you can get into a lot of money when making candles. This one today is gonna to be very, very minimal using mostly things found around your house, a couple of items you can pick up at your craft store or off of Amazon. It's going to be super, super easy. I'm really not going to overcomplicate this process. I feel like a lot of crafters do that when talking about candle making. And I just want to be able to share with you a really simple, easy tutorial how to make candles at home on the cheap really easily. Okay, first of all, you're gonna need a heat source. So we have this little tabletop stove eye going on here, uh, but you guys can use, of course, your stove. You can even use the microwave. A lot of candle makers have like a double boiler situation. Uh, really, what, whatever you wanna do is totally fine. You just need to heat the wax up and not burn it necessarily. Now, again, there's a lot of candle makers who go into uh, thermometers for temperature checks and X, Y, and Z. They go through a lot of different steps in the process. Again, I really just wanted to dumb this down so uh, all you professional candle makers do not come for me. This is a really simple video on how to make a successful candle at home. Small batches, of course, and uh, honestly, we've had a lot of success with this uh, type of candle that we're making. So uh, bear with us, but you will need a heat source. You also are gonna need something to melt your wax in. We have this uh, metal little canister here and it has a little handle on it. And this is where we're gonna pour our wax flakes in order to place it on our burner and melt that down. You're also gonna need some craft sticks or popsicle sticks. We have some wicks here. We've used these a couple of times, so we only have two left. We're only gonna be using one today. You can make uh, as many wicks as you want in your candle, but the candle we're gonna be making is in a little glass jar from the Dollar Tree. So we're just gonna have one little wick in this today. So that's what we're using for um, our candle container. That's what we're pouring it in. Um, a lot of old candle containers do really well. If you have something from the Dollar Tree, it, it works well. You can even put it in a mug or whatever you wanna do. Now a little trick, if you have a candle from let's say Bath and Body Works or something like that, and it's way down at the bottom, but you don't really wanna throw it away, you not you lock those nice wide uh, little glass jars from, um, from there, we do too. What you can do is boil some water and pour that boiling water into your glass, and all that wax will melt and float to the top and then re-harden as that water cools. You can pick it right out after it's done cooling down and then just wipe it out with some rubbing alcohol and you're good to go. So that's a really great easy way to clean some candles at home if you have some jars from old candles that you would like to reuse for homemade candles. Now we have some wax. It does not matter what kind of wax that you want to use. This was, I think, two pounds total. And we've used it to make uh, a couple of candles beforehand. So we're gonna be using the rest of this to make our candle today. Uh, it looks deceiving on how much is in the bag. You really are not gonna get a lot of candles out of this. And I can't really give you a perfect ratio uh, because it depends on the size of your jar or how full you want your jar and all of that good stuff. So I couldn't give you a specific ratio on how much wax you need for each candle you make. Uh, but the more you make them, the more you'll get the hang of how much wax you need per candle. Uh, because once it's melted, it looks completely different. Of course, there's a lot less of it uh, once it's melted. So just keep that in mind. That's not saying to go and over buy your wax flakes. Uh, you can start small or if you find a, a heck of a deal on Amazon in wax in bulk or something like that, go ahead and jump on it um, if you know you do wanna make several of these. So that's the wax that we're gonna be using. In order to glue our wicks down to our jar base, I'm gonna be using our Lynn Lily hot glue gun. We love it, it's our favorite. You can also just use a little bit of regular glue. You can use some sticky double-sided tape, whatever you wanna do. We just wanna make sure that wick is good and stuck in the bottom of our candle base. We have some candle fragrance here. This is uh, just what we, what we picked up from the craft store. You can go all natural with some essential oils. 
you can get these in like packs of bulk on Amazon. You can even find these places like Walmart. We're just using, excuse me, an orange scent today. And for scents and candles, you want about an ounce of scent for a candle this size. And I know you guys are probably like, well, what, what is an ounce? It's about two tablespoons. So that's a good little indicator for you. I'm much more uh, knowledgeable about like kitchen measurements than what is in an ounce, but it's about two tablespoons. So that's how much we'll be using, which if you think about it is quite a bit of this little bottle. Uh, so if you could buy it in bigger bottles, feel free. But again, if you're just doing this for a very small batch or something like that, a little bowl might be all you need. Because again, in this tutorial, we're trying to make it really easy for you so you don't have to spend a ton of money or you know yeah a ton of time on your going to hunt down all these supplies or anything like that so that is the fragrance we're using today and then to hold our wick in place you might want a dowel and some tape now you could use a chopstick from your kitchen you could use depending on how small your little opening was you could use like a little lollipop stick anything like that to just kind of make sure our wick was staying in the middle so you want a couple dowels and maybe even some tape uh, but again, we'll get to that. We might not even need it. You might not need it. You might not want it. Um, we're just dumbing this down for you guys to make it super easy. Now, there are special contraptions you can buy that are metal that sit on top of this that hold the wick straight and things like that. But again, we're trying to save some money here. So this is a good little DIY to do for your small batch candles at home. Now, that is all we need for supplies. So we're going to move on to starting to melt our wax. So I'm going to place this here. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to place our pot on the side. Our handle is like a plasticky material. So I want to make sure our handle is to the side of this where it's not going to burn. So now I'm going to place that in there. I'm going to pour all of my wax in here. It's probably good for right now. I just have a little bit more and this will melt down as well. And I'm going to get another dowel or a popsicle stick or something and be stirring this as it heats up. But I'm just going to turn this on to about four, medium high heat, medium, um, and then watch it. You don't wanna, of course, burn your wax. It's gonna melt down. So we'll just go ahead and watch this wax melt. Okay, and when your candle gets really, really um, melted like this, you can go ahead and take it off of the heat. I like to do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn our heat off, grab this, and I don't have an oven mitt, so we're gonna set it on an easy press mat, and this is when you're just going to manually stir it with a craft stick or with a, a little dowel or a chopstick or something like that to go ahead and finish getting those little pieces melted and this is the point where you're going to play a little bit of a waiting game and allow this to actually cool down so you don't want your wax too too hot or else when you put in your wax pigment or your i was about to say flavoring but it is not a flavor your wax scent then you uh you don't want it to burn off because it's too hot so this is where a lot of candle makers will get out a thermometer and have like a very specific temperature to tell you um, and if you have a kitchen th thermometer, that's tea totally fine. But if you don't, then honestly, I've had a lot of success just doing it this way. So I'm just gonna stir it until it melts fully. It's almost there. Just gonna keep stirring it, keep that hot wax moving in there to melt the rest of those little pieces. And then we're gonna allow it to cool for a few minutes. And then we're gonna add our fragrance. And while this is cooling, we can go ahead and place our wick down in our glass. Now, I have had my a hot glue gun preheating, so it's nice and hot and ready for us. If you haven't had yours preheating, uh, go ahead and preheat it. Or if again, if you're using glue or something different, that's totally fine too. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this. And you guys can add color to these. I have added uh, pigment to candles before. Uh, we also have a really, really fun in-depth video about making candles and also adding some water slide decals to them in a member only video for Oak and Lamb. So if you guys are not a member of the flock already and you would like to see training on so many different things from cricket to candles to sublimation, 
to laser cutting. I mean, we have so much amazing content here for you guys at Oak and Lamb. We would love for you to become a part of our flock today. You can click the very first link down below, see what all there is to see and see why you want to join today and become a member of our flock. So this has one more big clump that I'm trying to go ahead and melt out here. But after this cools a little bit, you can go ahead and add your fragrance and your uh, pigment if you want to. Again, I'm not a huge fan of coloring candles. I mean, it's fine, but I just, I'm always fine also with the just classic uh, look of candle wax. Totally fine with it. So we're going to let that set to the side and bring in our candle jar here. And I'm going to grab a wick. And I will have all of these amazing supplies linked down below for you all if you want to buy the exact ones that I'm buying. I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. Add some hot glue right there on the bottom. Now I'm going to take this and to the best of my ability, add it to the center of the candle. Now you can take one of your skewers here and press it down. Dowels, skewers, whatever you want to call it. And now that that's pretty centered up, you can see it's going to fall over to the side and that's totally fine. That's what we're going to do with these is make sure we center this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these down like this and pull this pretty tight. And since I'm using hot glue, I'm actually going to take my hot glue gun and add a little bit of hot glue right here in the middle of those sticks. And that's going to hold it in place for me right where I want it in between my wicks, nice, nice and tight. Now, if you have more wicks, um, in the member only video for Oak and Lamb, I had a three wick candle. So uh, it's, it was a lot better uh, of an explanation on how exactly to maneuver with all three wicks. But for one wick, this is a very easy process. So that's all we're gonna do. It's not glued on the wick or anything. It's just glued down over here. And we can easily take this and slide it right out when we're done. Uh, but we're gonna leave this on here through the entire drying process of our candle. Uh, that's gonna ensure that the wick is not gonna go anywhere. Um, it's gonna stay in place for us so we can set that to the side. And let's check on our wax here. It's looking really, really good. And continue to stir it. And this little clump that you guys see, I am going to get that as small as I can and then just continue on uh, with the process. Now, it could be an issue if you wanted to add pigment to your uh, candle because then that one little clump would not be getting color um, on the inside of it, so you might be able to see it. But with this candle staying the same color, having a little clump like that is totally fine. And I don't see it anymore, so I think we did get it all out. It's getting smaller and smaller. And again, you can like feel on the sides and see how warm this is and all that. Uh, but you do want to be careful and, number one, not burn yourself. But make sure that you're not adding your pigment or your uh, scent too early. So now we have pigment here. I'm not going to use it, but I just wanted to show you. This is what this one looks like from the craft store. There's a lot. I will link some below for you guys to be able to grab if you want to. Uh, but we're just going to be adding our scent today. And again, about two tablespoons for a candle like this. So I'm just going to pour. There we go. Just like that. Good, good. I eyeballed two tablespoons there. Just going to stir this around. Smells good, smells like an orange. I really like citrus scents too. So you guys get whatever scent you want, um, go crazy. They do have a lot of options on Amazon. I'm gonna stir this around. Okay, now we'll clean up our work surface and be right back to pour the candle. Okay, it's time to pour our candle. So we're gonna bring in our candle and again, it has these little dowels here. I'm going to make sure that wick is nice and straight. I'm going to give this a last little stir here. And we might not use all of this wax or we might use it all. Again, it's really hard to eyeball until you get a good rhythm down and you can, uh, you know, make sure that you are using the right amount of wax. It's better to have too much than not enough in my opinion. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this and place it right here on the Easy press mat, or of course you can use a coaster or a 
a pot holder from your kitchen. And we're just gonna pour this into the side. Try not to get it to hit the side of the glass over here at the top because you want this to look nice and pretty. So I'm gonna take it and pour it you know, in the middle, just like that. I'm gonna stop when it gets close to the top, just like that. So we'll see. We don't have that much wax left at all. You can grab a little container or a little silicone mold or something like that and make some little uh, bitty pieces of wax. And those would be amazing for wax warmers for little wax melts. So do not think that this should be wasted because this is uh, precious wax here. So go ahead and grab a little container or something like that and go ahead and put that in it. Um, or you could even spread it over some parchment paper or something like that and just let it harden and make other little wax chips like that. Uh, so really, there's a lot of options that you can do. And this isn't hot anymore, so I'm just going to set it right on the table. And as you can see, you can even adjust your wick at this point to make sure it's centered. And once it's centered, you're going to allow this to cool at room temperature. You do not want to speed up the process by putting it in a refrigerator or putting it outside on a cold day or anything like that. It will make it harden uneven. and have cracks here in the top and we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and allow this to dry on its own and we'll be back later once it's fully dried and I'll share with you how to remove uh, these little sticks here and how to trim your wick and get ready for your first light of your candle. We're back and our candle looks great. So all you're gonna do is pull this right off your candle, see how easy. Then you're gonna trim your wick and that's it. Once it's fully cured, you might have a couple of imperfections. That's tea totally fine. Once you burn it once or twice, of course you won't even notice them. And candles, they have a personality too. Not every one of them are perfect. And I really like the way that this, look, this looks. Also, you can go crazy guys, add some water slide decals, add some printable vinyl, add some regular vinyl to this. It's a perfect canvas for anything crafty that you're gonna wanna do. Roll this in jute, whatever you want to do. We love it. We love all of the creative freedom that you guys have when creating your own candles. I love making homemade candles. They are so easy to do. I can smell it from here. It smells delicious. I cannot wait to light this and have it burning here in the studio. Thank you all so much for watching this training. I hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, click subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when amazing videos like this come out. Once again, if you would like a lot of crafty help and knowledge in different areas of crafting, no matter what you're passionate about, here at Oak and Lamb, we can do that for you. We can make candles. We teach on Cricut, on Glowforge, on sublimation, woodworking. We do a lot with resin and uh, screen printing. We dabble in just about everything here, and we cannot wait to welcome you to be a part of our flock today. Click the very first link below to see how you can become a member. Don't forget to like this video. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions. Let us know if you're gonna make a candle, what scent you're gonna make yours, depending on the time of year, if you want it to be Christmassy, or if you want it to be springy, or if, you're lo if you love citrus like I do. Let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you another day for another video.